When people think of Welsh wizards, they likely think of figures such as Merlin. Merlin from Arthurian legend, of course, who has Welsh origins in Myrddin Wicht, and then Emrys from Dinas Emrys. There are numerous tales and legends that are said to be the origin story of the infamous wizard Merlin. And of course, Welsh mythology and folklore is littered with wizards of all varieties. From Merlin all the way to Gwydion and Math in the Mabinogi, magicians who do all sorts of magical things and are seen as quite skilled and trained practitioners of the magical arts. Yes, it's true, the folkloric and mythical landscape of Wales is filled to the brim with wizards or magicians. But today, I wanted to talk about another type of wizard, a historical type of wizard. My name is Mara Starling. I'm a Welsh folk witch, a Swinwraig. I'm originally from Ynysmorn, the Isle of Anglesey, and today I want to delve into the historical landscape of wizards in Wales, looking specifically at folk magicians, cunning men, wizards, if you will. If you're new to my YouTube channel, this is where I share the magic, mythology and folklore of Wales with the world. I grew up in Wales. Welsh is my first language and I'm a practitioner of magic that is inspired and informed by the historical and folkloric magical practices of my land. My new book, Welsh Witchcraft, A Guide to the Spirits, Law and Magic of Wales, releases in February of this year over in the United States and in March over here in the UK. So if Welsh magic and enchantment is something that interests you, I very much recommend clicking that subscribe button and going over to check the other videos that I've made on these topics. Let's dive in to wizards in Wales. First and foremost, let's find a definition of what exactly I mean by wizard within the context of this video. What are we talking about? I'm not talking about wizards in a mythological or folkloric sense here. I want to talk specifically about historical wizards, cunning men or folk magicians, people who operated within the community, practicing magic as magical specialists who aided the common folk with their magical proficiency. I think the first thing we should look at is what exactly is the word for wizard in Welsh? If you went to a Welsh dictionary and asked it for the word wizard, it would tell you Dewin, and that is the word I would usually use if I was speaking Welsh, I would say Dewin. However, historically, as you're already aware if you've watched my other videos, there are numerous terms for magical practitioners in the Welsh language. Specifically though, alternative names for wizards include Dewin, Daroganur, Swin Ur, Consirior, Dyn Hospis, Dyn Cyfarwydd, and so much more. If you want to learn more about Welsh magical terminology and what exactly one might call a magical practitioner in the Welsh language, go check out my other video where I discussed Welsh magical terminology and labels and terms used to describe magical practitioners throughout history in Wales. There is so much more than just Gwrach and Dewin. So Throughout history, there were many notable folk magical practitioners, and I've spoken in depth on this channel about witches or wise women who operated in the community. Today, I wanted to focus a little bit on the men, if one must focus on men. <laughs> Magical specialists were an everyday occurrence in historical Wales throughout the early modern period and through even to the late 19th century and early 20th century. Almost every community had a magical specialist, a charmer, a soothsayer, a conjurer or a wizard, somebody that they could go to for magical aid. And today we're going to talk about two cunning men, or wizards in particular, who were notably historic and relevant in Wales. And then we're also going to talk about the practice of wizardry, or Swin Gavareth, the practice of folk magic in Wales, and how it was important to the community. In Carmarthenshire, where all magical things seem to happen, in the late 18th century to the early 19th century lived a very enigmatic and interesting flamboyant character. That character was called Dr. John Harris. Now, Dr. John Harris of Kurtzakatno was a known wizard and fortune teller. Being a very larger than life character, as most magical specialists and practitioners even today are, John Harris was known for wearing full length velvet robes and cloaks as he walked around, sauntering around his community doing all sorts of strange things. Though he was strange and a bit of an oddball, 
He was greatly respected by most of the people in his rural community. He was a practitioner of what some would call a Kelvadid de, the black art. Though many newspapers reported that John Harris was a quack doctor and a charlatan, he was greatly respected in his own community and people travelled from far and wide to seek out his magical help. In his time, he was infamous for the things that he could purportedly do, and the community loved him for it because he helped them. Of course, that love and respect and admiration also came with a little bit of fear. John Harris was known to tell his clients that if the bill that he gave them for his services was not to be paid, that he would ensure that they would be paid in a suitable manner, so to speak. He had a quite prominent magical reputation, and people respected and also feared him, as they always do with wizards and magical practitioners, it seems. John Harris was known to help people cure from ailments or disease or wounds. He could help cure warts, and he would also place protective charms on people or their homes or their animals. On top of this, he could also divine the future, find lost objects, and all sorts of other divinatory things. One of the most significant aspects of John Harry's history was when he accurately predicted where the body of a local missing girl would be found, and of course, because of this, he was accused of her murder. But his accusation never really went forward. When he was taken to court, he said to the court, Look, I have certain skills, and if you want, I can prove to you the potency of my magical skills. And that is why I knew where that girl was, not because I killed her. The court, being supposedly learned men of the city, thought that this was a done and dry case. They knew that he had done it because how else would he have known where the body was? But when John Harris said, test me, give me the time of your birth and I will predict exactly where, when, and how you will die, they decided not to take the case any further. Now, rumour has it that John Harris accurately also predicted when he would die. He seemed to have a knack for knowing when people were going to kick the bucket, so to speak. Not only did he know when he was going to die, but he supposedly also knew how, and that it would be by accident, and as luck would have it, he did die by accident in a fire. John Harris had a son called Henry Harris, and Henry continued the family tradition of being a wizard though his reputation did not quite match his father's. Henry was often described as looking sickly, looking as though something was wrong with him, and people often complained that he didn't have the same proficiency or potency as his father in his magical skills. The legacy of John Harris and Henry Harris and their magical specialism, their work as wizards, is infamous nowadays among cunning practitioners, practitioners of more traditional forms of magical practice. And they are characters that I grew deeply intrigued and interested in when I first started looking into Welsh folk magic. Specifically, I loved learning about the things people believed about them and also how they operated. The wizards of Old Wales were known to consult books. They were seen as very scholarly people. And though nowadays the idea of somebody having a large library in the home seems normal, any book clever has a large library in their home, back then it wasn't much of a thing. So walking into a consultation room with a wizard and seeing these old dusty books and grimoires covering every wall was a sign that they were very learned and very well educated in their magical practice. Wizards and cunning folk of the past were said to get a lot of their skill from books and their research, but a lot of their skill also came from spirits. People would often jest about the fact that the wizards had pacts made with spirits, with demons and with devils, and there are numerous tales, including folk legends, about cunning men or Dunyon Huspis having familiar spirits and demons that they kept either in books, in boxes, or in their homes. But one thing is clear, and for certain. Wizards were a part of the community. They were people that the common folk could go to for ailments and all sorts of issues that they didn't really trust anyone else to go to with. The wizards helped safeguard your home from any magical threat and also physical threats such as fire and disaster. 
They could help take care of your livestock via magical means. They provided you with cures to ailments and diseases and sicknesses, and they must have worked because people kept going to them. Some of these wizards that operated in Wales kept what was called a hither covering. Hither covering meaning mystic book or secret book. And these books were said to be large books that were often kept shut with locks and padlocks. And these books were consulted and filled with all manners of magical knowledge. Some even said that these books had a spirit, a demon or a familiar spirit that lived within them, and if anybody other than the conjurer or the cunning man or the wizard were to open that book, then that spirit would be released into the world and cause all sorts of mischief and havoc. Some of these books have been found today, and you can look more into them if you search for Hivar Kavrin online. Specifically, one of the most notable is the Hivar Kavrin Sir Dinbach, which uh, is a Denbisher cunning man or conjurer or wizard's book, which includes all sorts of things, including an incantation to summon fairies. Here on my channel, we've already spoken about wise women or the Suinuraik in society and the Charmer, but now we've also discussed the wizard, the cunning man, the conjurer. And one thing that can be gleaned from all of this is that magical specialists were an important part of Welsh culture for centuries. And did that change? Perhaps there are some people still alive today who are the modern day counterparts of these cunning people, these wizards, conjurers, and magical specialists that people went to for aid, for things that the rest of society could not provide for them. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please consider going through and checking out my other videos and clicking that subscribe button. It helps me greatly. If you'd like to learn about these kinds of topics in more depth, then I very much recommend that you join my Patreon. My Patreon, you can join for as little as £1 a month just to support me, or if you would like some exclusive content, including video lessons, you can join the £5 or £10 a month tiers, which will gain you access to a wealth of uh, exclusive videos that I've never released anywhere else, and I'll be posting a new exclusive video to the £10 tier every single month this year. Your help and support will aid me in creating more content like this and ensuring that I can keep writing books on the topic of Welsh magic, Welsh spirituality and Celtic paganism. You can also find me on other social media platforms such as Instagram, TikTok and Twitter. My book Welsh Witchcraft is now available for pre-order anywhere you buy books. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you next time. Goodbye. Never try to trick or deceive a magical specialist who you have employed to help you with a problem. Many, many moons ago, in Carmarthenshire, in Wales, a farmer lost three of his cows. No matter how far and wide he searched, there were no signs of them. And so he did what any rational farmer would at that point in time. He went to the local wizard. It just so happened that this local farmer's wise man or conjurer or wizard was none other than the infamous Dr. John Harris of Kurtzakatna. John Harris, the wise wizard, sat down with the farmer and gave a consultation where the farmer told him what exactly he was in need of to find his lost cows. John Harris turned to him and said, I'll help you, but unfortunately it'll have to be in the morning because tonight I must consult my magical books. The farmer was sad to have to wait, but he said, OK, there's nothing more I can do. I'll go find somewhere to sleep for the night and I'll be back in the morning. The farmer went wandering around the quiet village looking for somewhere to sleep for the night when he came across a barn and he thought, well, I don't need to sleep in an inn for the night. I can just sleep in this barn. The farmer got to sleep without any issue, but in the dead of night, he woke up to the sound of footsteps approaching the barn, and who was to walk in but none other than the flamboyant character of John Harris, the wizard the farmer had consulted hours earlier. He walked in carrying a lantern, looking shifty. The farmer stayed hidden, thinking, well, I didn't ask for permission to sleep in this barn, so I should probably not be found. The wizard or conjurer drew a circle on the floor and began incanting to the spirits that he worked in tandem with. Seven spirits appeared and stood on the outskirts of the wizard's working circle. One by one, the wizard started asking each of the spirits, where are the farmer's cows? And he didn't really receive an answer from many of them. 
One of the spirits, upon being asked where are the farmer's cows, didn't say much. He just smirked, looked over to where the farmer was hiding, looked back at the wizard and said, a pig in the straw. But the cunning man didn't think much of that, spirits being spirits. Finally, John Harry's looked to the seventh spirit and said, where are the farmer's cows? And the seventh spirit said, the cows will be at Carmarthen Bridge tomorrow at noon. John Harry's left the barn, and then the farmer went off to Carmarthen Bridge to find his cows without consulting the wizard in the morning or paying him for his services. But when he tried to take the cows home, they fell as if half dead, and he had to beg the wizard to release them from his spell. Us Welsh witches and wizards are petty folk. <laughs>